have you the uh, movie boys seen the movie that is called um, the natural as all movie yeah the natural that uh, I apparently it was a good movie and I heard that I didn't see it but I heard that in the movie the um, Robert Redford uh, was playing a role of uh, a very uh, prominent, successful uh, baseball player. Do you remember? No? No? Uh, yeah? And baseball player. And who left his town uh, for, uh, to head for uh, the uh, big leagues. And he left his uh, small town and uh, left for uh, big leagues. And on the way to the big leagues, he was shot by a psychotic athletic killer, and uh, he stopped, dropped out of life for 16 years. And then he made uh, another goal at baseball, and even though it, will, it could kill him because of his previous injury, but Eventually, he made it. He became famous, and he got the fame and fortune. And he was meeting with his uh, long-lost hometown fiancé for 16 years. They haven't seen each other. And beginning of their awkward moment uh, passed, and they were talking, trying to kind of get to break the ice because it's been a long time that upward. And the uh, long lost uh, fiancé uh, with a very uh, concerned um, face and asked the question, what happened to you, Roy? <coughs> and uh, Rob Robert Redford thought about it for a moment and he gazed at the window and he simply said this, the life just didn't turn out like I expected. We can all echo that, right? Sometimes, a lot of times, life just don't turn out like what we expected. I mean, things that we were planned for, anticipated or hoped for, the way we think it should turn out, but normally, oftentimes, we experience as not the way, right? Have you ever experienced that? And I have, many times, plenty times. I think that's what uh, Jesus uh, uh, went through uh, in this passage when he went back to his hometown visiting his hometown people, he had a greater plan to bless them, and we can tell uh, as we study, but he couldn't do it. Why? Why? Because lack of faith, their lack of faith. And Jesus probably was very disappointed, right? He was, he left the town and amazed at their lack of faith. And his plan, what he hoped for, didn't go as uh, he planned for what was his intention was. And that's what we are going to look into this morning, that what caused them. You see, the faith, the lack of faith has a big role in this passage, right? And my God couldn't do much for that his hometown people. So, let's look at what caused them to have a lack of faith, right? And what about us? And do we have a stronger faith? And what can we do if we don't have a, what can we do to have a more faith so that we can catch all God's great big deals. Because it, this uh, passage clearly tells us that the hometown people missed out on God's great deals because 
they didn't have a faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So let's read verse 3. And it says, and yeah, let's read verse 3 first. That isn't he the carpenter? Let's read it together. Isn't he the carpenter? The carpenter. This is right after the chapter five will tell us, chapter four will tell us he calmed the storm and he cast out demons and he even raised dead girl from the dead. And after that, he visited his hometown and he preached a great message. And they were all amazed at him where he had this wisdom and knowledge. And even then, they said, well, isn't he the carpenter? Isn't he the son of Mary? Isn't he the brother of James? And Joseph and Judas and Simon and aren't his sisters with us? And what on earth he thinks he is somebody that we should respect, pay, honor, and praise. You see, we know who Jesus is. It's easy for us. And we can be very judgmental to them. Yeah? You didn't know who he was? I mean, after his death and resurrection, whole town, I mean, his, his, his mother at least realized that he was the Son of God. And, but before then, they all was the, the, the big news to them. And let's put it this way. We had a call this morning in our midst. It's a too good to have it back here and play uh, the music and singing with us. And he grew up here, right? And we adore him. He's charming and he is full of uh, uh, good spirit. And he's very gifted and talented. And now he moved back. To, he moved to um, Oahu. Let's say, let's pretend, let's imagine that we heard about his ministry in Oahu. And he went out canoe, and there was a big storm, and he. Calm the storm, he commands, you know, see, be calm, and it was calm. And he raised his um, roommate who apparently looks like a dad, and, but he raised them up from the dead. And all that we are hearing, you know, it's, because it's happening in neighboring town. And today he comes to us and stood in front of us. And he delivered a great message. And we were all amazed. And he says, this is written all about me. Well, until then you were okay, right? <laughs> it's all about me. Then, many of you, many of us, were played down. I mean, played down his uh, claim or his success. You know, we try to discount or reject his claim because by saying, I know you, you are son of James and Randa Marcos, right? I know you, you went to your Kamehameha school, you're not, you know, born from above, I mean, you're not the son of God, you cannot claim that you are the prophet, the Messiah, right? That's also, that's not what happened, I believe that they were too close to the family of Jesus. They lived with them for 30 years as a carpenter. So we cannot really blame them, right? And their attitude reminds us of uh, what we do usually, that uh, it is very uh, possible that we can miss something great standing right in front of us among us, in the midst of us, because of our perceptive of the things, our familiarity of the things. You know what they say, um, 
you can you are too close to the trees to enjoy the forest yeah you know huh? can't see the forest oh can't see the forest all right thank you you see huh For the trees, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go a different way. You know, everybody, everybody, um, the whole nation, I mean, the entire world has come to um, see um, National Park Yellowstone, right? And do you know people who live uh, around the surrounding area? And some never. Step into the national park, even though they are very close, and everybody is traveling around the world to get there to see the old faithful. Yeah, and Disneyland. I know one my friend who lives in Anaheim, California, and very close to the, the, the Disneyland. And she's about sixty. Not that I'm sixty, <laughs> <laughs> and she never. Went to Disneyland to see the happy, you know, place. What a beautiful, wonderful, uh, the dream place. Because she she always sent her kids, but she always said, "Well, one of these days, take it for granted." I wanna that's curiosity. I wanna ask you, how many of you living in this beautiful island, right? Everybody, whole world is traveling to here, come here to see the beauty of this island. All right. How many of you, I think, have seen the sunrise on, from on top of the Hale Akala mountain? Oh, how many of you haven't? Let's go that way. You see? Oh, thank you. I was. Yeah? Why haven't you? Huh? No, the, you know, get up early in the morning to see the beauty, spectacular sun, sun, sunrise. I mean, you know, when I got here, everybody talked about it. I said, okay, I can go there late, you know, the mountain and get up four o'clock in the morning. No day you, you know, sunrise, and every day sunrise, right? Unless my, you know, the, the guest, if, if guests didn't insist that they, they have to go see the beautiful, they, they've seen the advertisement, they want to go see. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone there, even though I live right here, right for, for the Hale Akala. Because we take it for granted. We take it for granted, and we think we can always catch. And so the town people, uh, hometown people, Jesus, the hometown people, they, it was too familiar. And they, they didn't think that there is much more that they can see. They didn't think that the beauty of uh, the, the power of God was with them, you know, in the, standing in the midst of them. And so our Bible says what? Jesus will do much. They don't do any miracles because of their lack of faith, and then lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. You know, healing takes a lot of faith, right? Yes. And the Bible, this passage seems like healing was a minor thing. So if healing was a minor thing, what Jesus has prepared and planned to do for his town people, something great must be great that he has planned for, for them, bring forth for them. But they miss out on good. So that's why I can say, right, they miss out on good deals, God's great deals. Faith is very important to experience God's miracles in us, among us, within us. So, let's say, what about us? Are we better than them? Comparison is not good, yeah? What about us? 
Do we have faith in Jesus that He can do all things for us? Do we anticipate, expect to see, to experience, to be empowered by His presence and have some miraculous things happening in our lives? Every Sunday we come and encounter chaos moments, divine moments. We go back home as we step out of this sanctuary and we feel, yeah, I got it. The Lord God empowered me. I experienced miracle. Verse 5, it says, he couldn't do any miracles. It goes against what we believe, right? What do you mean the God of Almighty couldn't do? What do you mean He is all powerful, nothing is impossible with God? We can do all things through Him. What do you mean He couldn't? Bible didn't say He didn't want to do or He didn't, even though people ask, but He couldn't. Because of their lack of faith. What See, one thing our Lord God will not do or cannot do is coercing us. God has given us freedom, free will. We have a choice to make. God will not force us to believe in Him. God will not take us, force us, force us to drink the water. He will convict us. He will guide us. He will lead us. He will stand at the door of our heart, knocking, but He won't push in. He won't invade. If we're not ready, if we don't have faith, if we don't open our hearts and accept Him, and in His presence, right now, whenever we gather in His name, His presence is here. And if we don't open our hearts, nothing can happen. You know, I always uh, imagine this. When we pray, we lift up our hands or whatever hands you do. I try not to close it, you know. I. It's a silly, but close means, yeah, his blessing comes down and he's going to drip all over the floor, going somewhere else. I like to open it. I like to imagine this big ball is on my hand. Yes, Lord, pour out. Pour out my heart, you know. And when we often times focus on what we cannot do, rather than what we can do in Jesus Christ. And I am so proud of you. And when we planned for Bazaar this year, and everybody noticed that we didn't have as uh, many, um, as we didn't have our manpower as much as we used to have. And we were worried, we were concerned, we prayed. But I believe that I'm so glad and I'm proud of you that we didn't follow that ministry. We move forward in faith. You see, that we experience God's great power, His uh, great presence that we experienced yesterday. It doesn't matter how much we made. It's different. It doesn't matter how much we made. And if you were here yesterday, that you. All can say, yes, there was good event that we felt God's presence and God's guidance, God's blessing upon that event. And our expectancy, our faith has a lot to do with it. You know, where is Jesus' hometown today? Hmm? Us, we are the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, right? We are his hometown today. And we know what they did. 
and we learn from them. So we have this anticipation, expectancy that our God will bless us, guide us, and lead us, empower us. And I praise God for the chair. Alinea, let us give her a big hand. Good job. It was everybody was uh, chipped in, and especially we pray. I mean, prayer for people. And John Thompson, hey, let us pray. Let us pray so that the rains, you know, stop, and so we can have a uh, better um, turnout. And I said, I added, although if it is God's will to pour out the rain, send a multitude of people here. I'll have, you know, and we have. A uh, big crowd, and thank you to our uh, papas and their daughter, uh, Joy. Joy. Oh, what an addition! That was so awesome. And those are the humble servants. Oh, you've got so much energy that that unbelievable. I cannot believe. I mean, you've pulled out so much for the Lord for this uh, Ohana. Let us give yourself a big hand. Yes, that is what the, you know, uh, our faith does. We do seemingly impossible things with a Christ strengthened by His presence. We make it happen. We experience God's miracles when we do that. So we can say faith is very important, right? Very important that we need to exercise every day in order for us to catch all God's great miracles. Don't you think? Mm? Yes. 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 So what can we do? What can we do? You know, those of you are, are really good shoppers. Good at shopping, you know? I'm not. And, and you know, you memorize. You know where and when, which store has which items on sale, how much is on sale. If spam Musubi is on sale, I would not know how cheap it is, how great bargain it is, because I don't even remember what original price is. But some of you are really good at it, right? And be proud of yourself because you save a lot of money in that way, right? And my husband, why you don't want to agree with me? <laughs> you think I'm, I'm something coming bad coming, yeah? <laughs> my husband is one of, you know, my husband loves shopping and he remembers every price, I mean, and he compares every store the price and he will get the best deal. Sometimes he get things that we don't need <laughs> just because it was a good deal. So I always uh, grumble about his shopping habit. You know, why, why did you buy this? Why did you? And we have a lot of things in our garage. It has a steel price tag on it because, <laughs> yeah, because it was just a good deal. And this time I was very proud of him. I didn't yell at him or I don't grumble about it. This time, he called me, you know, he says, half an hour, I'm going to make this show. He says, you know, I received this 20% off uh, uh, from the barbecue grill, stainless barbecue grill, that they, it's a $500 one, but they mark it down to, to uh, 400 so 20% off, he's gonna get it for 320 so he went there to check it out. I said, we have a barbecue grill, but honey, it was a good deal. So he went, and uh, he was about to buy that, and then, then he claimed the Lord told him not to buy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a compulsive buyer, you know, when it comes to a good bargain, good deal. 
and the Lord told him to buy and led him to wander into the warehouse area. And there, few items on sale marked down and more than the one displayed in that area. And so he stumbled on this barbecue grill that similar to the 320 now one, and this was a $200. So he was just drooling over it and checking it out and happy, happy, yeah? 200 is a good deal. And then the manager came to him and, and, and asked him, do you like it? If you want to have it, I will mark it down more. And he said, you can have it for $80. Wow! wow. So he said, wow, what's wrong with this, you know? Why? And there was uh, uh, some uh, nuts and bolts missing. And to him, it's no problem. He's a handy dandy man. He can fix it, right? So he carried this thing out to the, uh, uh, the cashier. And the cashier looked at it. Oh, manager signed it. It's $80. Let's see. And she took off another 20% <laughs> <laughs> off from the $80. So he paid the sixty-eight dollars. We have oh you you saw look at that sixty-eight dollars. He read about it and drew, I mean he's gonna talk about this story for the rest of his life, the rest of his barbecue life, right? Seven burner partial state the stainless still. What a good deal, huh? What, what is the point? I just, my point is not great about that we have another barbecue grill that, that is so cheap, but the point is this. Those of you are good shoppers and always look out for a good, great bargain and good deals, we've got to do that to look out all the time for good deals, big deals, the, the, the great miracles, what Jesus can do when we gather, when we are in the presence of Lord Jesus. We've got to, all the time, not only when I need it desperately, when I am sick, when I am in trouble, oh Lord God, please, I wanna hear from you. But every day, every moment, Lord, I give you my heart, every breath I take, every moment of my life. That's when we can maximize His presence in us. And what can we tangibly feel that He's present with us? It's the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word dwelt among us, right? The, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when we worry, when we are into some kind of trouble, and we are good and happy, whatever situation we are going through, we pick up the presence of God and read and memorize and lift up our spirit because it's full of promises. And every time we have devotion, every time we gather, that's why every time we gather, we read the Bible, we pray, and every time, because that's tangible presence of our Lord Jesus. And the Bible said, assured us that, that the Spirit raised Jesus from the dead is within us, among us, with us. Therefore, there is nothing we cannot do 
with Him, right? Without Him, without our faith. Even Lord Jesus, Almighty God, could do much. So our faith in Him, His presence, go together for us to experience daily Kairos moments, daily a great big deal in our lives. Amen? Amen. So, Paul Kelly and Imran, let's step up for the Lord, turn to the Lord every day. Don't let us uh, limit His uh, ability because of our lack of faith. Let us continue, search, and continue, be in the presence of our Lord God so that we can catch all those great big deals. As we do, God is going to bless our socks off. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray.